Yo guys, what's going on? It is Invin here and today I have a big, big update for you guys which is going to be involved with the December PTR patch when it comes to live and most specifically in terms of the gypsum and the new expertise system. Now, a lot of you guys when I posted the video the other day were kind of putting in the comments about how unfair you thought the crafting thing was where wind crafters had worked their way up to getting that 600 gear score which by the way is not an easy feat to do. They were then suddenly going to be penalised for not grafting their watermark up over the course of this and in turn then the expertise system. Now, originally that was then pushed back to January, so they said they were going to wait to hold off on that till January. But this is massive, massive news and probably the best news that any of you crafters that are watching today's video could have asked for. This is a complete rework on what they had said and is now a brand new thing where you're not going to be penalised. If you've crafted an item, you can see it down here at the bottom, which I will go through and read this in just a second. But any item you craft, any item you earn from a quest, or any item you purchase from the faction shop is not going to be reset, which is amazing, amazing news. So I'm going to go over this post and kind of explain how that will now work with the brand new gypsum systems that we are going to be seeing in New World. Now, before we jump fully into today's video, guys, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you go down below, press the red subscribe button with the notification bell on as I do upload every single day. So I would love to have you guys here as part of my channel community. And let's jump into the video here. So first things here, it says, thank you for all of your continued feedback on the expertise and gypsum system. Whenever possible, we want to share upcoming changes and discuss them with you so that we can build a better game together. Your feedback on this system has greatly improved the direction, so thank you again. Before diving in, I want to be clear that we are dedicated to not reducing the power of players in the world, other than cases of addressing bugs and imbalanced problems. The rest of the post details how we are achieving that while retaining the benefits of the expertise and gypsum system. So the big change, and this really is a massive, massive change. So if you've watched my other video on the expertise system, you're really going to want to pay attention to this because it does have a huge knock-on effect. And of course, kind of makes it a little bit better for most players. So it's a good thing. So it says, in early 2022, when we start reducing the effectiveness of your gear to your expertise level, we will exempt the following items. In other words, the following items will not be affected by the reduction in level, which is any item that you craft, any item that you earn from a quest or any item purchased from the faction shop. So when these changes are implemented, gear score scaling will only apply to items sold or traded after that patch. So any items obtained prior to this patch will not be impacted or reduced in any way. When we thought about it more, reducing the power for existing players is just an unacceptable and something that we will not do. We initially thought it only being temporary and giving the new path to gain power back with the gypsum system would be acceptable, but it is now clear that we were wrong. So. First of all, right out the gate, I know there's a few more bits to read here, but that is a fantastic thing by AGS, and it's something very, very rare that we see from developers, which is actually admitting a mistake, saying that they're going to change it, and explaining how they're going to change it for those existing players. So, before we go any further, you know, you can say what you want about previous updates and bugs, and that's another story, but particularly on this subject, I think that is a really, really big positive, and something massive that is really good to see from a development, so I'm really happy with that. What it basically means is that any of you guys that have been crafting, and that you've been making gear and obtaining gear at this time you're not going to see that reduced when we see the introduction in january where the expertise gear that you get that's above your level will be reduced to your level so things that like the void armor things like your 600 gear score legendary weapons etc they're not going to get reduced so it's just new stuff that you obtain you've got to obviously get your watermark or your new expertise level up in order to be able to maximize and use those properly but new stuff from that point onwards is only going to be affected. It's not going to be the stuff there that you've crafted, that you've earned from a quest, or that you've purchased from the faction shop. So that's really, really good. And it does mean that all of these guys that were panicking, including myself, thinking, oh my goodness, we're suddenly going to lose a load of our good stuff. We're going to have to really, really sweat up in a month. All of our gear scores to 600 really hammer down, especially on those void pieces you've got. Any of those, you know, 600 legendary pieces that you've bought for maybe 10 to 15k off the auction house. Yeah, it's... it's it's a lot so thankfully that's not going to be the case anymore and we are going to see that basically be exempt and it's just going to be new stuff coming in that will need to be so say for example after the patch has come through and we're into january if you then buy a void bench chest plate but you're not already at 600 then i would assume that what it's saying here is it's going to be affected but any stuff that you have prior to that will not be affected which probably means if any of you guys are thinking about buying 600 weapons 600 armor and you're not quite at that 600 mark you don't know if you're going to have enough time over christmas and over the new year to grind that up before the end of january then i would recommend 
and buying that now if you can before that patch comes into full fruition as that will give you the opportunity to have it equipped and have it kept at 600 even when the new system comes in so bear that in mind so the next part of it here says the updated system will also give players alternative ways to equip themselves if they don't want to engage in the expertise system crafting especially will be given even more importance in new world since any item you craft will be usable at that gear score regardless of expertise quest and faction shop items will be other alternatives to good gear and both are things that we can continue to introduce more of in the future so quest items faction shop items particularly i'm thinking there about epic or your legendary quest weapons at 580 some of those are really good so we can keep those at 580 which is brilliant and um, also obviously there you've got your crafters being able to make like 600 gear score weapons and armor really really good and jewelry specifically is going to be something that's probably a lot of people's um best kind of thing they're thinking thank goodness for that because i know i've got a few 590 plus pieces which i'm certainly not up to the watermark for because it's basically no jewelry to drop uh, i'm literally on like 525 30 on jewelry if that so that's really good for me specifically that's one thing i was worrying about getting a big drop in so that's going to be really really good going forward we acknowledge that this change will create a difference between the way that the game worked before the change and after we recognize that some players who haven't hit 60 yet and acquired their gear may feel like the game got harder for them hopefully this is offset with the addition of the gypsum system as a new avenue that the previous players did not have so anyone that is up to 600 we don't have to worry about it but any of those newer guys that are hitting 60 or will hit 60 in the new year you guys will have the gypsum system to help you level up or indeed anybody that is 60 that isn't quite 600 gear score yet in addition when we implement the gear score scaling we will now only reduce the effectiveness to the middle of your expertise and the items gear score so if you have an expertise of 520 and buy a 600 gear score musket off the market the effectiveness will be 560 this combined with getting to use all the perks should create good value in the marketplace for future users so that's something really important that i feel like again a lot of people kind of missed in the first instance of reading through this which was it's actually going to affect crafters badly or people just going in elite runs badly because there's 600 or 590 plus gear score items and not actually going to sell. Well, now they are because obviously with that mixture, so it's the middle point between the gear score of the item and your expertise level. And I would assume as you go up your expertise level, obviously that gear score will go up and the average level will go up. So you can actually hit that 590 level way before you get to 590 especially if you've got a 600 weapon if you haven't got a 600 weapon then obviously it's going to take a lot longer and you're not actually going to be able to get up to 590 very easily yeah unless it's like 595 and you, your expertise is 590 ish then you might get a little bit of a boost but other than that obviously you are going to see a decent amount of 600 weapons and 590 plus weapons specifically and armors still wanting to be bought off the marketplace so anybody that was worried about economy crash that should should have fixed it um obviously we'll have to see how it works when it does come into full fruition in the game but this is a really really cool thing to see now december tuning and balance adjustments also here they've put on this post about also based on the ptr feedback and from playing with the expertise and gypsum system we are going to make a number of tuning and balance adjustments to the system please keep in mind that these have not been tested so consider them directional examples of changes we are planning for december so they're going to first of all reduce the cost of crafting a gypsum orb to 2.5 coins from 100 so that's a massive massive reduction and gypsum cast to five coins from 475 so this is a huge addition something that we all said instantly this is ridiculous amounts of money so that's really really good we decided that there was no need to add another coin expense to our level 60 players but kept a minimal amount so that the end game territory owners can earn a little bit more tax from the income that makes sense because obviously it's only reek water and ebon skill reach that actually have access to these in territories so having a, the ability to make some extra money off those is going to make those territories a little bit more valuable and um, but overall it's not going to be a huge coin sink for those level 60 guys which is really really good they have made changes to the topaz gypsum to daily instead of weekly and reduced the crafting ingredients to make it less difficult to craft for those of you that don't know about the topaz gypsum you guys can see here on screen this is the initial post that they put in and topaz gypsum is found on hostile creatures at level 55 plus but only after consuming a special attunement potion that can be crafted at a tier 5 camp now in my initial video about this i did mention that that was on a weekly lockout which was a little bit ridiculous so obviously if we scroll back to present day what they've just said you can see here that that's now on a daily lockout which makes much 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 more sense and they are reducing the crafting ingredients to make it less difficult to craft it was initially one of each of seven of the elemental animals that you find around the map the turtles the snails etc 
Now they're obviously going to be reducing that to make it a lot easier to craft that and we can do it daily which means that we can actually do seven daily which makes way 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 more sense because obviously you've got five pieces of armor and two weapons. Then of course you've got your jewelry as well but most people will probably focus on their seven slots first so your two weapons and your five armors and then move on to jewelry afterwards so having seven a day just makes more sense so I'm very very glad they've changed that. This, the weekly lockout was bonkers to be honest so that's a really really good change we've also then seen a change to gypsum earn cooldown timers from 22 hours to 18 hours just to give a little more leeway to people's play schedules fantastic change in the future we want to build global cooldown system to make it easy to coordinate this and other daily activities like crafting and faction missions but that is a lower priority than server mergers and other critical fixes so this will not happen in the short to medium term Excellent, excellent update. That is fantastic. So that right there is something exactly what I talked about in my previous video on this. I said, you know, the cooldown's a little bit too much because people, you know, say for example, you play at 8pm. It takes you a couple of hours to maybe craft up a couple of games of Outpost Rush, waiting for queues, etc. By the time you've done that, it's 10pm, you're locked out for 23 hours, come back at 9pm the next day. If it takes average two hours a day, you're eventually going to get pushed into 1, 2am. And for most people, that's not a time that you're going to be on unless it's maybe the weekend. And even then, you're pushing it. So to have it down to 18 hours makes much much more sense and is absolutely a huge W for pretty much every player. It means we can actually do these cooldowns as and when we will be normally playing. So essentially, if you log on at 7 p.m. daily, by the time it gets back to 7 p.m. the next day, even if it takes you six hours, which is the entire play scan that most players will play per day, if not more than that, then you will still be able to craft it at exactly the same time or start earning it at exactly the same time as you did the previous day, which is fantastic. Now, again, global cooldowns was something that I touched on massively last video. And again, they've said they've addressed it there and I completely agree with them. It needs to be a secondary priority to, of course, server mergers, keep people engaged and critical fixes, bug fixes, etc. But it is something that's on their radar. They are looking at it. So this is a brilliant update and some great communication from the devs. So thank you very much for that. That is amazing. Now, point four here says that they adjust the way that the expertise bumps work so that there is a minimum as well as a maximum. Currently, there is no minimum, which can result in a few bad rolls at the start, really demoralizing players. This will also increase the average bumps needed to go from min to max expertise. Our goal is to average around 35 bumps. So... In other words, right now you can. there's no minimum what you can get dropped, you're not always forced to get higher, and sometimes even when you've got your gear score up, you're still getting some like 512s, 515 drops when you're in that 575, 80 range. So it's a little bit odd, um, and even when you are getting off-range stuff, you're still getting that lower end, maybe 570, 572, when you should be trying to get that 580 drop, for example, which can be quite annoying when players, you know, trying to graft it up. So I really like that introduction, makes it a little bit more consistent, and particularly when we're going to get a number on screen to see where we're at, this is actually going to be a us to progress faster like it says there the goal is to average around 35 bumps to get you from 500 to 600 which is a lot fewer than what we've got now i can assure you of that and basically makes it quite doable so seven gypsum per day you can craft one into each of the things so for example if you're using sword and shield you could do one sword or one shield per day or if you're using hatchet you could do one hatchet per day so it's 35 days of only doing gypsum orbs Obviously, of course, then you have elite chests, you have your expeditions, you have your arenas, with, of course, the arenas and the expeditions having a guaranteed bump as well as the gypsum drops. Then you've got your timeless shards on top of that. Then, of course, your elite chest areas, which are going to have active opportunity to get increases like we have now just slightly less but of course they have chances to drop timeless shards as well now so there's going to be plenty of ways to get your gear score up and your gear up and roughly i reckon that should take people around a week and a half to two weeks the average play time which is a lot lot quicker than it is now it's taken most of my guys in my company around about a month to a month and a half to be getting up to that 600 gear score so much better much more concise for players which is a really really good update far less grindy and it's exactly what players have been asking for so brilliant work there They've also done move gypsum rewards from cash to event. A few activities such as outpost rush, corrupted breaches, arenas and aptitude granted gypsum in the cash in the PTR. This leads to hoarding and uncertainty if using a cash now is safe. This change should resolve both of those concerns. So essentially when you get gypsum rewards, 
you don't get them in a cache anymore. You'll get them as an re event reward. So essentially you'll have from Outpost Rush, for example, you get the Outpost Rush cache and you will also get a Gypsum mob just placed into your inventory. Again, this means people can't hold them up. It actually progresses your system per day because it gets you on the cooldown. And of course means that you're not going to glitch out with any of those caches there, which we were seeing a little bit in the PTR. Already addressed that before it's hit live, which is a brilliant, brilliant thing. So that's the end of the post. They said there, thanks again for your feedback. One of the benefits of sharing our plans prior to final implementation is to hear your sentiment and adjusting the designs accordingly. Zin. Fantastic job. Overall, I think a lot of players will be very, very happy with this update. It's exactly what we were complaining about in terms of how the crafters were getting nerfed, how the systems work, particularly the seven-day lockout on Topaz. That's been addressed. The changes to cooldown timers, all of that really, really cool stuff. And, of course, they're, you know, adding in a minimum bump mark to that expertise level is really, really good. Makes it quicker. Of course, you know, addressing any bugs that we had. And then that first point there as well, reducing the cost. Massive, massive thing. So all of those things are massive. Really, really helpful stuff. And then when we go back up, of course, to the first bit that we read here about them changing the crafting system, changing what will be lowered, and meaning that we now have exemption for crafted items, quest items, and faction shop items. That is huge. So hopefully... You guys have enjoyed this video. I'm bringing you guys all the news and updates that I can on this, keeping you on top of the game, keeping you on the ball. If you did watch my previous video on it, be sure to add in this information and kind of replace it. This is the most up-to-date stuff compared to the previous video. So make sure, you know, the stuff I said about it lowering your expertise level, it's now not going to happen. This is the new update on that, which is brilliant. So just take that into account. So that's really, really cool. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do make sure that you leave a like on it down below. It really, really does help me out and support my channel here on YouTube. And if you are new and you want to see more new world content, new updates guides tips and tricks all that good stuff keeping you on top of all of the latest from new world then make sure you drop a subscribe down below with the notification bell on as i do upload every single day so i would love to have you here as part of my channel community other than that guys as always thank you very much for watching thank you for your time and i'll catch you on tomorrow's video take care and peace